Another thing associated with sequences are summations. Uh, sometimes we want to add up a bunch of terms in a sequence, and we can use the Greek letter sigma. This is an uppercase Greek letter sigma. Uh, you might be familiar with the lowercase sigma that gets used in statistics a fair amount. But this is the uppercase letter sigma that represents the summation of a set of terms from a sequence. This is generally what a summation looks like. You may be familiar with this. You'll certainly see it again um, as you get higher up into math and computer science. But essentially, what this means is you have an index variable i. You're going to count from 1, which is the starting condition underneath the sigma, up to 5, which is the ending condition. So i is going to take on the values of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the sigma means you're going to add up whatever expression is inside the sigma. Now, since it's just i, I don't need any kind of parentheses here. But basically, this says add up all of the i's as i goes from 1 to 5. So you're going to have to add up when i equals 1, plus i equals 2, plus i equals 3, plus i equals 4, plus i equals 5. Each one of these terms here right, is going through all of the values i takes on. And what you're adding up in this case is just i. Right, because that's what the i is here. And when you add this all up, you get 15. Okay, so the answer to the summation is just the final number at the end, but you definitely want to show the work in between. Now, many times it makes sense to start from i equals 1 and count up to a number. Sometimes we would go from 0 to a number. But the summation operator works with any starting index and any ending ending index. So here we're going to go from 3 to 7. And instead of just adding up the numbers from 3 to 7, every time i takes on a new value, we're going to calculate 2i plus 4. Okay. So in this case, we're going to start with i equals 3, and we're going to calculate 2 times i plus 4. Well, in this case, that's 2 times 3 plus 4. Okay. That's the first term in the sum. Then i gets 4, so we're going to add to that a new term, 2 times 4 plus 4. Then we're going to add to that what happens when i equals 5. We're going to have to do i equals 6. We're going to have to do i equals 7. So we're going to get 2 times 5 plus 4. We're going to get 2 times 6 plus 4. And then we're going to get 2 times 7 plus 4. Okay. Now, if you want to be clever about it, you could notice that there is a 4 in each of these, right? And you've got 5 terms. So you could do the 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 2 times 5, and then just add 20 at the end, okay? But we're here, we might as well just work it out. Okay, 6 plus 4 is 10, 8 plus 4 is 12, 10 plus 4 is 14, 12 plus 4 is 16, and 14 plus 4 is 18. So we have. Let's see, 22, 36, 52, it looks like 70 here. Okay, now let's do this last example here on this page. We have one more on the next page. It's a little more complicated, but let's just work through this one. Um, usually we use i as an index for a summation. We can use something like j. Really, you can use any letter you want. Whatever variable you're using to count from, you should make sure that you use that expression, that variable in that expression. Okay, so in this case, we're going to start with i equals 1, and we're going to take 1 squared, or j equals 1, and we're going to take j squared. Then we're going to let j equal 2, and add in 2 squared. And then we're going to add in 3 squared, and 4 squared, and 5 squared. And we're going to get 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25. And that's going to give us 5, 14, 30, and 55, okay? So essentially, once you get the hang of this and understand what this notation means, you just write out all of the terms as i or j or whatever your summation variable is from start to finish. Calculate that expression for each of the terms and then add them all up, okay? Now, there may be cases where we have something like this, a double summation, okay? And in this case, j is going to go from 1 to 2, 
and for each j going from 1 to 2, i is going to go from 1 to 3. Okay, so we're going to start off with j equals 1, and then you're going to have to let i equal 1, i equal 2, i equal 3, all the time j equals 1, j equals 1. Okay? Then you're going to let j equal 2 and start all over again, i equals 1, i equals 2, and i equals 3. Okay? You have a summation within a summation. This is sort of like a for loop within a for loop. If we, when we get into programming, or if you've seen programming, you've got nested summations like you would have nested for loops. Now, every time you have an i and a j together, you're going to add i plus 2j. So for this one, you're going to have 1 plus 2 times 1, which is 3. For this one, you're going to have i plus 2j, which equals 4. And for this, you're going to have 3 plus 2j, which equals 5. For this one, you're going to have 1 plus 2j, that's 5, 2 plus 2j, that's 6, and this one will be 3 plus 2j, which will be 7. So this summation will be 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7, and that will add up to 7, 12, 17, 23, and 30. Okay. This summation has three terms. This one gets counted twice, but every one of these has these three inside of it. So you really have two times three or six terms here in the sequence. Most of the time you'll be dealing with and quizzed and tested on single summations, but it's not a bad time to introduce double summations. They're not so bad once you've seen a couple of these. Okay, so now it's your turn to try some before we move on.